Police are also asking for help finding a missing man, and they specifically want hunters to be on the lookout this weekend because they think that he met with foul play. Lacey Chris spent the day in Fond du Lac looking for details. Friends and family say they haven't seen Timothy Nance since November 1st, and police say they haven't found him yet either. Outside the courtroom, emotions ran high. I don't point fingers at nobody. I let the police do their job, and I'm not mad at nobody. But he need to be found. But ain't nobody said nothing about him in there. Seven days they've been jailed. Okay, I don't know if they did it or they didn't do it. Okay, he's been missing for 27 days. Investigators are calling it a complicated investigation. Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Described by residents as the all-American city and a beautiful, quiet place to raise a family and settle down. Fond du Lac is French and means the bottom or the farthest point of the lake. It gained its name because of its location at the bottom of the south end of Lake Winnebago. Among the just under 43,000 people that call Fond du Lac home live Tim, Eve and Tamika Nance. Eve and Tim had met at a friend's party in 1992 when they were both 16 years old and their relationship moved fairly quickly. Friends said they both had great senses of humour and were very charismatic, bonding straight away and loving to laugh and entertain people. They soon moved out of their parents' home and into an apartment together. Eve found out she was pregnant a short while later and the pair started planning their wedding. In 1994, when Eve was nine months pregnant, she was attacked outside of the couple's apartment by a man trying to steal her purse. Tim heard this and ran outside with a gun. In all the commotion, he shot the attacker in the foot. The wound wasn't fatal, and despite Tim and Eve's protests of self-defence, Tim was placed under arrest. As Tim was being taken away by officers, Eve went into labour, and their daughter Tamika was born as Tim was being booked into jail. Tim would remain in jail on assault charges for almost a year, and when he was released in 1995, on the way home he and Eve stopped at the courthouse and finally got married. Eve was very close to her younger sister Tina, with Tina moving into her sister's home in 1995. Two years later, Tina gave birth to her daughter Justice. Justice and Tamika were more like sisters than cousins, and the whole family were a tight unit. In 1997, Tim would be arrested again, this time on a drugs charge, and he served three years for this offence. When 2002 came round, Tim, Eve and Tamika would make the move to Fond du Lac. Although Tim found finding work difficult due to his previous convictions, he worked a variety of odd jobs over the years. Eve was the main breadwinner and worked with those with mental health issues. Tim was happy to stay at home and look after Tamika, as well as her cousin Justice. Tamika recalled, My mum worked a lot. My dad tried and they made the best of it. Tim was a popular man and had a lot of friends in the area, frequently hanging out at local bars and playing pool at the weekends. Time spent away from the home was an issue in the couple's relationship, mainly due to the fact that according to friends, Tim was well known to be a ladies' man and this accounted for a lot of his time away. Although Tim had previously tried to cover his tracks, the cheating was becoming more and more blatant and Eve was well aware of his many affairs. They would row a lot about it and physical fights would often break out, with Tim even fracturing Eve's leg one night. By 2013, the couple had been married for 15 years, but Tim started up yet another affair. When Eve came home and found the pair in bed, she punched Tim in the face. Everyone was urging the couple to end the marriage, with Eve's brother asking why she was staying with him. Eve said she would rather have some of Tim's time than none of it at all. Tim told a friend he was having his cake and eating it too, and the relationship carried on as it had been. Later that year, on a typical Tuesday in November 2013, the usually quiet police department received a call from Eve Nance. Tim had gone out on Friday evening and not returned home. Eve was both worried and annoyed that he wasn't returning her calls. Many wondered if Tim had disappeared to go and meet another woman, but although all of his friends could attest that it wasn't unusual for Tim to leave home, it was unusual for him to drop out of contact completely, especially for four days. The police arrived at the couple's home and Eve told them she was becoming concerned that something bad had happened to him. She told officers that the last time she had seen him they had had yet another fight and Tim had stormed out of the house and gone to Milwaukee, just over an hour away. Eve gave them a theory as to why he could be missing. She explained that one of the ways Tim made his money was by dealing drugs. Over time, Eve claimed, the longer he was dealing, the more he was using drugs himself. Although he hadn't been using for a while, she was worried he may have relapsed and accidentally done something to himself, or done a drug deal gone wrong and someone had hurt him. 
Police knew that Tim's record wasn't clean and wondered if drugs was at the root of what had happened to him. But once they started talking to people that also knew Tim, a very different picture was painted. One of Tim's good friends, Tasha, said, at one point he dealt a little weed, but he most definitely was not a hardcore drug user. The idea of him disappearing from the family home to go on a drug binge seemed totally unbelievable. Authorities contacted Tim's cell phone provider and to their concern, there had been no activity for days. It had now been two weeks since Eve said she last saw Tim and the police were having little luck in finding any leads. They could draw no conclusion other than he had been met with foul play. Police are also asking for help finding a missing man and they specifically want hunters to be on the lookout this weekend because they think that he met with foul play. Lacey Chris spent the day in Fond du Lac looking for details. Friends and family say they haven't seen Timothy Nance since November 1st, and police say they haven't found him yet either. We do believe that uh, Mr. Nance um, was met with foul play. Uh, we do believe that he is deceased at this point. And while police won't elaborate on what evidence they have, the they are asking uh, for your help. Mr. Nance's whereabouts are still unknown. Uh, we are, you know, with the start of the Wisconsin deer hunting season coming up here, uh, we are asking uh, hunters, people that might be out walking uh, in fields, woods, uh, if they do see anything suspicious, obviously to contact our local law enforcement agent. Friends of Tim elaborated more on the fights between the couple and said that Eve had threatened her husband on several occasions, even brandishing a gun at him and the woman he was seeing. But they all acknowledged that Tim was far from perfect himself and the relationship was on a downward spiral. The more his friends talked, the more everyone became more and more convinced that if something had happened to him, it was something to do with Eve. His friend Tasha said, I knew right away she killed him. Another, more thorough search of the couple's house found a hole in the wall in the bathroom, one authorities were sure had come from a bullet. Fond du Lac Police Detective Bill Ledger noticed that the shower curtain liners in the bathroom were brand new and seemed out of place. Eve was asked to come to the station to clarify a few more things. She admitted that although she knew about the many affairs, she denied being bothered by them, saying she accepted who Tim was and that was just how their relationship worked. She also denied ever threatening Tim and didn't involve herself with his business outside of the family home. But now, the police had found a bullet hole and had witnesses that could attest to Eve threatening him on many occasions with a gun. But although they now suspected Tim was dead, officers had yet to find a body and they didn't have a weapon either, which meant they didn't have enough to arrest Eve for murder. They did, however, have enough to suggest probable cause. Probable cause requires that the police have more than just suspicion, but not to the extent of absolute certainty that a suspect has committed a crime. Eve's lawyer was fighting for her release, arguing that holding her without charge was a violation of her constitutional rights. After a week, Eve asked if she could talk to the investigators, as she now had a very different story to present. She told police that there had been an altercation at the house that night, and when she had tried to walk away by going into the bathroom, Tim had followed her. She said he was the one waving a gun around and started hitting her. In the process of her trying to get the gun away from him, the gun went off, and Tim was shot twice in the chest, she claimed. The detectives asked why she didn't think to call 911, but Eve said she went blank, and instead of doing this, she took all his clothes off, wrapped him in plastic film from the windows and a shower curtain, put him in the car, and drove away. She said she had tossed the gun and empty shell casings out of the window on Highway 41, en route to the woods, where she would ultimately leave Tim's body. Where Tim's phone ended up remains unknown. She gave the police a rough location as to where they could find him and a search quickly got underway. That same evening on Thanksgiving Day 2013, Tim Nance's body was finally found. He was naked, lying frozen in the snow in the fetal position, almost 50 miles away from his home. Police say they believe they have found the body of a missing Fond du Lac man, Timothy Nance. A man who described himself as one of Nance's friends said today, at least now there is some closure. Good evening on this Thanksgiving night. Other than saying they've found a body, police in Fond du Lac are remaining tight-lipped tonight. Officers have refused to give any other information, such as where the body was found or a cause of death. The 37-year-old Nance was last seen on the 1st of November. His wife Eve reported him missing on the 5th. In Rodney Emerson's home, a candle burns all day and night in front of a picture of Timothy Nance. Nice guy. Good guy. Little bitty guy. He had this big smile, you know, even though he was so little, but when he smiled, he was like 6'4". Early Thanksgiving morning, the Fond du Lac Police Department said it found a body, a body that's believed to be Nance's. 
The Fond du Lac police are not giving out any more information at this time. There is a joint press conference scheduled between the police and the district attorney's office for next Tuesday. For Emerson's part, he says he's just happy he has closure now. I mean, it's Thanksgiving, you know, so I kind of looked at it like we got a lot more to be thankful for. We got the body, you know, that was the main thing. So now we can give him a proper burial. Emerson says he's known Nance for 10 years and describes the Nance's relationship as troubled. He says he just wants the truth to come to light. I'll keep his memory alive. There's no doubt about that. I'll be at every court date. He can guarantee that. An autopsy later revealed that Tim had died as a result of two gunshot wounds to the head, not to the chest, and he had been shot sometime on November 1st. Police and prosecutors firmly believe that Tim was actually in the shower at the time he was shot and did not see the attack coming. The medical examiner testified that both shots could not have been fired at close range during a struggle, as Eve had said, and the placement of one of the bullet holes in the wall appeared to confirm this. During their investigation, police also obtained a video of Eve and her sister Tina buying supplies at a store at about 7.30pm on the same day Tim was killed. Tina picked up shower curtain liners and curtain hooks. They argued that the curtain liners were replacements for the ones now covered in Tim's blood. Authorities believe that Tina had helped to conceal the crime. Phone records showed that Eve had called Tina five times, just minutes after Tim's death. Officers also argued that Eve wouldn't have been able to move Tim's body without help, and this was where Tina came in. Eve was arrested and charged with murder, and Tina was also placed under arrest. My name is Bill Lamb, I'm the Chief of Police with the City of Fond du Lac. Joined up here today by Assistant Chief of Operations Steve Klein with the City of Fond du Lac Police Department, Assistant District Attorney Dennis Krieger with the Fond du Lac County District Attorney's Office, and Fond du Lac County District Attorney Eric Tony. As you all know, the City of Fond du Lac Police Department received a missing persons report regarding Mr. Timothy J. Nance on November 5, 2013. As we have previously indicated, shortly thereafter, our investigators determined that his disappearance involved foul play and we ultimately suspected that he had been the victim of a homicide. We arrested two individuals, his wife Eve Nance and his sister-in-law, Tina Ewell, in connection with his disappearance. However, as we stated at that time, this investigation remained very active, particularly as it related to our search for Mr. Nance's body. Eve Nance also shared information with our detectives regarding her subsequent disposal of Mr. Nance's body and other evidence related to this crime. This information led our detectives to the metropolitan Milwaukee area and ultimately to a wooded section at the end of the 6200 block of North 101st Street in the city of Milwaukee. After a late night search of the area, City of Fond du Lac Police Department detectives discovered Mr. Nance's body in that brushy, wooded area at the end of that street. The autopsy has revealed that Mr. Nance died as a result of two gunshot wounds to the head. The discovery of Mr. Nance's body, the subsequent autopsy results, and all of our previous investigative findings have now led to the filing of a criminal complaint charging Eve Nance with first-degree intentional homicide and hiding a corpse. Although there have obviously been significant developments in criminal charges now filed in this case, the investigation remains ongoing and very active. Also this evening, a Fond du Lac woman charged with killing her husband learned at her first court appearance today that it'll be tougher for her to get out of jail. A judge set Eve's bail at $100,000, which was soon increased to $300,000, and $50,000 was set for Tina. In January 2016, 39-year-old Eve Nance stood trial, and she pled not guilty. A big part of the prosecution's case was that Eve claimed that Tim was shot in the chest during a fight, but the medical examiner clearly showed that the two bullets had entered into Tim's head. The medical examiner also talked about the placement of the bullet hole, which they said showed inconsistencies in Eve's account. And according to the prosecution, the motive was simple, rage and revenge. After years of threatening with him, she had finally done it. They argued that Tim had been taking a shower, hence him being found without clothes on, and Eve had ambushed him and shot him without warning. The prosecution described it as an execution. But according to some experts put forward by the defence, Eve was suffering from battered person syndrome. After years of infidelity and a volatile and violent relationship, this had pushed her to her limits. Although she had reacted in anger, it was also in self-defence, something which friends of Tim strenuously denied. It's a process. We all know that. You know, no longer justice is served. You know, right now, you know, Everybody that, that knows him, loves him. Tim and Eve's daughter, Tamika, however, said that her father was always the aggressor and wanted things his own way all the time. 
I hope that we find evidence to prove my niece's innocence, and then we can get back to the how this all started with a missing person, and my nephew is deceased, and his burial, and um, yeah. You know, multiple years of going through things that sometimes maybe a person just snaps. Less than two weeks later, the jury had reached a verdict. They sided with the prosecution. Eve was found guilty of first-degree intentional homicide and hiding a corpse. Today, a Fond du Lac County judge sentenced her to life in prison for the murder and hiding her husband's body. But today, some friends and family think Eve Nance was given a sentence with the hope for a future. Eve Nance had a lot of support in her corner today, though many here were torn between what justice would mean for a woman facing life and the man she killed. Just being friends with both of them, you know, I, I don't even know. We felt that a, a life recommendation without the possibility of extended supervision would be appropriate. But the judge ruled in 25 years, Nance can make her case to the courts to possibly be released under supervision. She'll have to petition uh, the court for that release. It's not uh, a given that she would be released after she serves that sentence. I think even 25, I think it's, I don't know, I just think it's a lot. The judge did say Nance's credibility was suspect. She killed and then hit her husband's body, lying to family and authorities along the way but her previous criminal record was clean. The judge also said this could have been the ultimate result of a life of both physical and mental abuse for the couple. The judge believed that some leniency should be given under the circumstances of everything that had been put forward. When it was her time to speak, Eve turned around to face her daughter Tamika and said, I love you. Whatever happens here today, I love you very much. Several people spoke on Eve Nance's behalf, including Tamika, who said, my mother is not a monster. She is a wonderful person. I miss my father. I can't lose her too. Eve told the judge that she had loved her husband since the first time she saw him, and she still loved him. She said she had no excuse for what she did. No one except the district attorney, Eric Tony spoke on behalf of Tim. He said Tim was everyone's best friend and had turned his life around. In Tina Ewell's case, she was found guilty of hiding a corpse as party to the crime, aiding a felon and obstructing an officer. Fond du Lac County Circuit Judge Peter Grimm ordered Tina spend 24 months in prison, with the condition of probation for five years. If the conditions of probation were not met, Tina would have to spend another four years in state prison, and then have five years extended supervision. Even Tina both filed appeals against their decisions, but both appeals were denied. What happened on that day back in November 2013 can never be known for sure, but what is known is that a young girl essentially lost both of her parents in a terrible way. What actually happened, how it came to be, and the events leading to Tim dying in the bathroom that night remain unconfirmed. Stories of the couple's relationship is contradicted by friends and family of both Tim and Eve, but many of Tim's friends said they didn't want to see Eve get life in prison because they knew Tim wouldn't have wanted it, and said that had he survived the shooting, he would likely have forgiven her. Eve Nance will be in her 60s when she becomes eligible for parole.